when we face adversities of many kind, the Bible is very clear. Press on, be persistent. We'll talk about that tonight at the table. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me at the table. Well, all I can say is that it has been quite a day. Um, as many of you know, from, I put a message out on Facebook that I may not be able to um, have at the table tonight due to some technical difficulties. My computer, my laptop that I use for at the table took a nosedive today, the hard drive went bad, and there was no way to recover it. So I had to scramble, and at first I thought, there's not any way I'm gonna be able to do this. And then I thought, oh, I can maybe do this at the church. And then I kept thinking, and I remembered that I had some ways to possibly make this happen. So here we are. But I gotta do this in one take because I'm running out of time and I gotta make sure it gets uploaded to Facebook tonight. So things might be a little bit different tonight, but you know what? When I woke up this morning, I knew that I was going to be talking about adversity and persistence, being persistent in adversity. So God kind of knew what he was doing. He was preparing me for this day. So just a quick little update on what's going on. Um, you know, when, when I lost the hard drive, I didn't have a very good backup. So I lost all my old videos, which is okay. Uh, there may not be a blooper episode now because <laughs> I lost a lot of my blooper uh, details, but that's okay. Um, I lost all of my artwork. And I told Tanya, I said, I lost all of the artwork. She said, well, make some new ones. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? So now there's new artwork for the splash screens for the videos, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, the Bible is pretty consistent about speaking about adversity. The Jesus tells us in a parable about the widow who was persistent in talking to the judge to find justice. She was persistent, she was persistent, she was persistent, and finally the judge gave in and gave her what she needed. How much more will God who is in heaven give us what we need when we are persistent in going to him? You see, things can happen. Home repairs, car breaks down, family issues, relationship issues, financial issues. There are many different things. Maybe the hard drive in your laptop fails when you're preparing to make a new video for At The Table. Many different things can happen. But when we are persistent in not giving up, God will return blessings to us and help us. Now you might say, oh, that's not always the case. I mean, I, I constantly go to God. I constantly go to God in prayer. Okay, what I'm saying is when we have negative things happen in our lives, we can draw within or we can take it to God. When we take it to God, we are allowing him to bring positivity into our lives. It's not, it's not a, an equation. It's not a vending machine. God may say, no, I want you to continue to go through this, okay? But when we draw within and we don't give God that chance to even move in our lives, what do you expect? Look, I know I've been through some very difficult times in my life. I have been in the wilderness more than I want to be, and I don't ever want to go back again. And I'm not saying it was me. I'm saying it built me up to be who I am today. That's what James tells us in his, his message. He built, it builds up our character to make us who we are. We can get frustrated when we pray and pray and pray and, and the health problems don't go away, the difficulties don't go away. We can keep praying. And trust me, when God is ready, when he knows the time is right, 
he will unleash the blessings upon you. But just because he doesn't answer right away, if you draw within and you say, okay, I went to God first, it didn't work, I give up, you cut off that chance for God to be positive in your life. When we go to God, we allow God to work in us. Well, that sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? We're allowing God to work? Yes. Yes. God is the greatest gentleman. He is not going to force you into anything you don't want. But he may say, not at the moment, time is coming. But I didn't hear that. Well, it's okay. Maybe you weren't listening or maybe he didn't actually say that. Maybe he's waiting. God knows. We don't know. But when we are persistent in going to him, we leave that door open for him to bring positivity into our lives, bring blessings to us, to build our character. But the moment we say, I gave up on God, you give up on God, you give up on God. What more can I say to you? So let me just tell you how my day went. <laughs> um, when I, I was just rebooting the computer, because it hadn't been rebooted for a, a long time. I have this laptop that I've had for only two and a half years, and I use it for at the table. Uh, it's been acting kind of strange the last few days, the last couple of weeks, actually. But I found ways around that. Well, anyway, I reboot it, and it gets in what is called the loop of death. Reboot. Oh, you found a problem. Let's run some diagnostics. Everything looks okay. Reboot. Oh, I found a problem. Let's run some diagnostics. Oh, everything looks okay. Reboot. And it goes on and on, and you can't get out of it. So I tried to reinstall Windows, knowing that I would lose all of my files. That's when I discovered that my hard drive had failed and it was not recoverable. I tried to get my files off. Was not possible. So I lost everything. And in that moment, I felt like throwing the laptop against the wall. But you know what? I don't want to put a hole in the wall. And I didn't want to ruin what could be salvaged. I can get a new hard drive. Okay? So... Yes, I'm a human being. Sometimes I lose my temper. Don't ask Tanya about that. Sometimes things get so far beyond my control that I feel like I just want to scream. But in that moment, I took it to God and I said, God, look, I'm going to put a message out on Facebook that I may not have the show tonight. And that just opened up the door for God to work because now he's made it possible I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty details of how this got to be tonight, but let's just say, praise God, he made it possible for the show to go on tonight. And I'm thrilled, but I got to do it, like I said, all in one take a night because I don't have editing software on this new computer I'm using and I don't have the time to go through all that. So things might be a little bit different than what you're used to, but this might become the new norm. So anyway, I want to encourage you when you're facing adversity of all kinds, to be joyful in the persecution. If we read the last few letters of the New Testament, I'm talking about James, Jude, uh, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, even 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, Titus, um, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, they, there's two common themes in there. In those letters, and they're all towards the end of, until you get to Revelation, they're all towards the end of the Bible. The themes are, somebody's come in and spread false doctrines. And the second thing is, there's persecution going on. And those two kind of often go hand in hand. Okay? So, first I want to talk about the persecution. We are, most of us, I think all of us who are watching this show are probably pretty lucky to not have to face persecution. I mean, the kind that they faced in the first century church. Paul, or Peter, I'm sorry, Peter wrote his second letter knowing that within days he'd probably be executed. And he was. But he wanted to not only fix the false doctrines that were coming in, but he wanted to encourage people that we will see Jesus again. We will see him again. 
And even if your world looks like it's falling apart, I'm going to quote Casting Crowns here. It's not falling apart. It's falling into place. So just be held by the Lord God Almighty. God sometimes has to, does allow bad things to happen to good people so that good things can come out of it. I'm looking at my hard drive failure in my laptop as a blessing in disguise. I'm going to get a faster hard drive. And I redid my artwork for At The Table and I think it looks better than what I had. Let me tell you a little story. When my kids were just little tots, maybe a couple years old, each of them, I think the oldest may have been about five years old. Um, we planted seeds. We had a maple tree in the front yard. And of course, the little helicopters come down and, and I said to them, you know, to each of them, Julia was the smallest. She didn't even really remember what was going on. We took Pringles cans. We took those helicopter seeds. We planted them. And when little sprouts came up and started to grow little tiny trees, we planted them in the ground. Now, Brandon's, it died off. Caitlin's lived. It started to grow. And it got to be, I don't know, maybe two feet tall. It might... <laughs> I still laugh about this. Maybe two and a half, three feet tall. I still laugh about this. My neighbor, great man. He's now passed on to be with the Lord. But he thought he was going to do me a favor. And he cut my grass. Oh yeah, you know where this is going. I go out there one night and Caitlin's tree is gone. This was now this, just a little stubble. I, I panicked. I was like, what am I going to tell my daughter? I wanted to scream at my neighbor. Though he did a good deed, he, he did me a favor. <laughs> you know what Caitlin said? She said, that's okay, daddy. It'll grow again. Floored me. The faith of this girl at that age. Oh, that's okay. It'll grow again. And guess what? That tree is almost as tall as the tree in the front yard that it came from this day. It grew about this tall in about two months. And within two or three weeks, it was almost to that height again. I'm not kidding. I have never seen any tree grow as fast as that one did. You cannot tell me that God was not behind it. Caitlin allowed her faith to let God move. I listened to my daughter and let my faith allow God to move. What I saw as something terrible, because my daughter loved that tree, it was gone. I saw it as something terrible, but God turned it around into something great. But he did it because I held back. I didn't yell at my neighbor. All I did was I put a fence up instead. <laughs> and funny thing is, the neighbor says to me one day, you know, when your neighbor puts a fence up, they're usually mad about something. And I wanted to tell him, but I didn't tell him. I told him it's because we got a dog. And it was. We did get a dog, and we wanted to keep the dog in the yard, and that's why we put up the fence. But part of it was I didn't want Caitlin's tree to get run over again by the lawnmower. He was a great man. Anyway, so when we face adversity, we can draw within and shut God out. Or we can open up our faith and in the spiritual realm, just you wouldn't believe the things that can happen. When we pray, when we believe, when we do not return evil for evil, when we return good upon evil, as Jesus said, it is like when you love your neighbor and when you do, the Bible says that when you do, you're heaping hot coals over their head. What he means is you are doing a miraculous thing in the heavens. You see, and I know we've talked about this, so I know you know what I'm talking about. This is all physical. This table, it's all physical. This wall, it's physical. This microphone, this camera, this video. There's a spiritual realm. Think of it like the internet. 
when you type something into Facebook, it goes out into the information superhighway, the virtual realm. You don't know how it's going through the wires. You don't know about necessarily know about IP addresses or uh, servers or backbones or things that are happening in the virtual world. But it gets to all your friends. Some of you have a thousand friends. Blows my mind. All your friends see this on their computer and they see your message. Make sure it's good. Because not only your friends are seeing it, but other people can possibly see it too. Just keep that in mind. But anyway, we don't know how that happens, but it makes an impact on people's computers everywhere. Sometimes around the world. When we pray, when we don't draw within, when we, in our faith, go to God and say, I can't make this, but I know you can. I can do all things through Christ, through, strength, or through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. When we do these things, we make a change in the spiritual world. We allow God to move. Now, I know it sounds funny when I'm saying we're allowing God. But like I said, God will not make us do anything we don't want to do. We open the door for God, and he opens a bigger door for us to come through and blessings flow. But the moment you give up, and you know what I'm going to say because I've said it before, the largest vein of gold ever discovered was a mere six feet, a social distance away from where the man gave up. Six feet from being a millionaire, possibly a billionaire by today's standards. Six feet away, he finally gave up. He had dug for days. You can look this up. It's a true story. I can't remember the guy's name. He kept, he dug and dug and dug and he gave up six feet before he found the gold. Someone else saw a hole, started digging six feet later, boom, they're rich. Don't give up until and even when it's over, don't give up. Now, of course, I mean, let's not go there. <laughs> like I said, this is almost like a live broadcast. I would have edited that part out, what I just did, but I can't do that now. But hey, the show's going on. I opened up my faith to allow God to move, and boom, here we are. We're getting a show. So I really want to encourage you to be persistent in all that you do. I know it can look like it's over. And I know the things that I went through are, may not even remotely compare to some of the things you've gone through. But when you're going through them, it's the most important thing in the world to you. We're individuals. We, we don't like pain. We don't like things not going our way. So it's not here. I'm not here to compare my sorrows with your sorrows. I'm not here to compare my problems with your problems. I know that in the grand scheme of things, a failed hard drive is nothing compared to what some people are going through. But what I'm here to say is be consistent, be persistent. Persistent is a character trait. It's when you don't give up even in the face of adversity, even when you want to. And just like if I were to start lifting weights, my muscles would get bigger. They would get stronger. When we don't give up, in a sense, our spiritual muscles get bigger, get stronger. There's more I want to say about this activity, if you will, in the spiritual realm. But I'm running out of time. If I don't get this thing posted to Facebook, it's not going to happen tonight. So, although this may be short, at least it still happened. You've been a great audience as always. I will be back next week with another episode of At the Table. And I will definitely see all of you then. Good night. Mm -hmm.